Did you know you're in one of the best games ever and you are one of the characters in the game? Isn't that fun? <laughs> there are certain things you need to learn to advance in the game. And that's what I'm here for. I'm like the cheat code to life. And the reason I do what I do is because I was so close to losing the game. I was so close to game over. And fortunately for me, the universe provided me with a second chance, although it felt more like a fourth or fifth chance. When I hit rock bottom, I was searching for answers and they came from the most unusual place. I went to see a psychic, crazy, even for me, after being raised Catholic. And even though I left the church in my early 20s, I eventually lived my life based solely on science and had a career as a design engineer in precast concrete. This is probably starting to get weird, all this psychic talk. But what he told me saved my life. One of the first things he said was that he was gonna break my legs if I continued talking to her. My mouth dropped to the ground and I was shocked. Not because of the hard talking New Yorker sitting in front of me, more so because I knew exactly what he meant. I was in a relationship for six years. I proposed, we were engaged, and most of the wedding plans were set. By this point, I had to cut out everyone out of my life. I, I already had cut out everybody out of my life, except for Katie. She was the last person I had any form of connection to. When I put a halt to the wedding and ended the relationship, it was this very scary place to be in. For the first time in my life, I was all alone. I knew I didn't want to get married to Katie, and yet I had no one to talk to about all the pain I was experiencing. I was emailing her, and she was responding back to me. The psychic, his name Jeffrey Wands, told me I was giving her false hope, and I needed to give her time to heal. When I called Katie later that day, she confirmed all of it. I told her I was gonna give her the space she needed even though I knew it wasn't what she truly wanted. She was in love with me and it broke her heart. I hated myself for years for the pain I caused her. Now this is the piece of information Jeffrey gave me that saved my life. He told me that I would meet my soulmate. He gave me a glimpse of a future I had completely discounted for myself. The possibility of true love and a potential future worth sticking around for was the catalyst to start over from bottom. Moving forward from this point was hard. I was 60 pounds overweight, smoked a pack of cigarettes a day, an alcoholic, and I suppressed everything for decades, if not more. For years, I would ask myself, how the heck was Jeffrey able to get the information? I was perplexed, but now I understand. It took me a while to learn about the invisible components of the universe, the stuff you can't see, like your mind. Did you know we have no idea where the mind actually exists? Where do thoughts pop up from and where do they go? How did this information get to a psychic on Long Island? You can put it in a box called the paradox. There are a lot more things that happen in this invisible realm and that's why it's called the metaphysical. This material world that we live in is what we normally call reality. Yet, what if I told you it was actually an illusion and the real stuff is in the metaphysical? What? What are you talking about, Suski? I know. It's wild to think about, but it's part of the game to wake up from the illusion. The significance to this material world, like your job, your bills, your 401k, those are all illusions. Don't get me wrong, there are things one must do to get by in this material world, but it doesn't need to be attached to all this significance, leading to the number one killer, stress. Mm -hmm. Stress is the underlying killer of all things. That's why Monday mornings, the start of the work week, is when heart attacks happen most frequently. It's hard to not be attached to this material world. We just can't help ourselves. I'm here to tell you there is much more out there for you to discover. I can't wait to help you along your journey because that's all this is. It's all a journey. 
Once you discover the rules of the game, it'll become easier and easier. Depending where you are at in life, it might be a bumpy ride for a while, but don't you worry, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now, I wanna get into today's topic. I wanna to actually talk more about what I spoke of in the last podcast, because just like all things you learn, there needs to be more reinforcement of these concepts. And there's more I wanna share around this topic of beliefs. Your thoughts determine what you attract into this world. And that internal dialogue is determined by your belief systems. Did you know your mind operates very much like a computer? Your conscious mind is like the random access memory, also known as the RAM. And the subconscious mind is the hard drive to the computer, also known as the ROM. And the programs that dictate your actions and behaviors are based on computer code. The computer code, also known as language, is what makes the program run or in this case, your actions and behaviors. What you do is based on your beliefs. Now, we have a whole gamut of beliefs. You start creating beliefs at a very young age. In fact, I'm gonna go a step further, even though you might not be ready for this. Your beliefs can happen in this lifetime, in the womb, they can come from a past life, or they can be passed down to you genealogically. If you told me this at the age of 34, I would have told you that you were crazy because my already determined belief systems did not coincide with these concepts. I want you to have an open mind about these things because it will be beneficial to you in the future. I know, isn't that daunting to think about? After all, your brain isn't even developed while you're in the womb and you don't even start reasoning until the age of seven. So how can that be? Simple because we aren't talking about the physical world, people. We're talking about the metaphysical, and your mind is a part of that. So you can create beliefs without having a fully functioning brain. It's one of the secrets of the universe. Do you wanna know the beliefs most often created in the womb? The most frequent beliefs created in the womb are being a mistake, being unwanted, or being a burden. For example, if you weren't planned and your mother is fearful about how she's going to take care of you, as you're in the womb, you'll take on the emotions of your mother. And even though the brain isn't developed, the subconscious mind will take on language associated with the situation, like being unwanted or a mistake or a burden. It's like the subconscious mind is looking for situations where these core limiting beliefs can be associated with. And every human being can develop these core programs. Any of those resonate with you? I developed all those programs. I wasn't planned, and my parents' marriage was falling apart during this period of time. I took on all the stress and worry of my mom and dad. Now, let me tell you why I call them programs. I need to get to the definition of what a program is. A program is a machine, like a computer, with coded instructions for the automatic performance of a task. In this case, you are the machine. The program is your automated behavior and the coded instructions are your beliefs. Most of what you do is on autopilot based on these programs. So here's the staggering statistic. 90 to 95% of your behavior is determined based off of these programs. Yes, a majority of what you do is based on these beliefs you created from the past. Beliefs are the coded language of these programs. Let me show you how the beliefs I created in the womb impacted my life. If I had plans to go out with someone, and if they changed plans with me, it would be evidence that they didn't want me around. Or if I wasn't invited to a party and other people I knew were invited, I would end up wallowing in my own self-pity because I thought other people didn't want me there. You go through your entire life seeing the world based off of these beliefs beliefs. Your perception of the world is viewed based off of the language of the computer code. I, per I perceived being unwanted by family, friends, and members of the opposite sex. In fact, it stopped me from going up and talking to the girls I was attracted to because I figured they wouldn't want me around or want me. Also, being a burden was another program that dictated my behaviors. I could never interrupt anyone in conversation. Even if I was going to be late for my next appointment, I could not interrupt people 
even if it was urgent. I always had to patiently wait for someone to say everything they had to say. I've stayed in conversations an hour longer than I've wanted to because I didn't want to be a burden to the other person. I've lost money, acquired aggravation, and let people walk over me because I didn't want to be a burden. These beliefs are not empowering. They are limiting. If you are limited in any area of your life, there's a belief that's getting in your way. The one I just shared with you are some pretty big ones, and they show up frequently, but there are a couple more that are more common. Here are some of the kitten caboodles of limiting beliefs. The big ones I often see are not being good enough, or not being enough. I also often see not being worthy. Imagine going through life never being good enough for yourself and not being worthy to be with the person you're dating. The perfect way to sabotage a relationship. Telling yourself you're not good enough for that person. Let's see how long that person wants to stay with you. Talk about a frustrating program to have. Who am I kidding? They're all frustrating. And maybe that's why I ended up being the mind guy. I've had so many limiting programs. There's an even more frustrating limiting belief that exists. Out of all the limiting programs, in my opinion, the worst ones are believing you are unlovable or not worthy of love. One of the things you'll discover on the journey, which is part of the game, is that there's nothing real except for one thing. The book Course in Miracles gladly explains all of this. Love is the only real thing that exists. Love is the connecting force between all things, and once the limiting programs are removed, all that remains is love. Imagine believing you didn't deserve the realest thing that exists. Talk about suffering. Do you want to know something else? Suffering is actually caused due to separation. Siddhartha, the original Buddha, was the first one to discover this. The limiting programs create separation, keeping you from the truest, realest thing available which is love. That's the way the cookie crumbles in this reality, people. Now, many of the beliefs are really basic. They are called core limiting beliefs, but there are a bazillion ways to create a limiting belief because there are a bazillion ways to create language. Language is what creates our beliefs and it's what creates our reality. What you think, you become. Mindset is everything and it took me a very long time to discover that and it took some time to work on finding and reversing these limiting beliefs, just like learning a new skill or craft. You have to practice. You have to increase your awareness to your thoughts. If you want to change your reality, you need to shift your thoughts. And the easiest way to do that is by finding limiting beliefs and rewriting, rewriting the computer code to them. Remember when I told you last podcast that you have 50 to 80,000 thoughts in a given day? Holy crap, holy. That's a lot of thoughts. Here's another wild statistic. 70% of those thoughts are negative. I often ask myself why that is. I believe in a world of polarity or duality, like the yin-yang concept, that things naturally balance themselves out. If someone were to ask me before knowing this number, I would have guessed negative thoughts are around 50%. When I was at my lowest of lows, 99% of my thoughts were negative. I was truly suffering, and it's why I didn't want to be here anymore. So it's curious to know that research has concluded that such a high percentage of our thoughts are in fact negative. The main reason you have so many limiting thoughts is primarily due to the evolutionary process. It's the way our mind moves away, moves us away from pain towards pleasure. It's a survival phenomenon that I will get into in greater detail in the near future. All you need to know for now is that the average person has a majority of your, the average person, a majority of your thoughts are negative. If you only knew what I knew, the reason you're suffering is because of your beliefs and more so the separation caused by these beliefs. Your beliefs dictate where you end up in life. They limit you, and they project themselves out into your reality. If you grew up poor, the likelihood you end up poor as an adult is high, even if you end up acquiring a high-paying job. Because when you were growing up, you heard your parents talk about being poor or not having enough or struggling to pay the bills, and you said to yourself, I guess I'm poor too. That's the belief. You could have a high-paying job, but 
if you spend more than you make, guess what? You're still poor. The beliefs are self-fulfilling prophecies, and it's not your fault. We aren't even aware how these programs run our lives. We all have them too. I was a burden, not worthy of love, unwanted, a loser, and poor. These are only a handful. I've had more core limiting beliefs than anyone I've ever met. Your beliefs are the only things sabotaging you from achieving your dreams. We end up settling for something less than we actually deserve because of these stupid limiting beliefs we created in our past. The unconscious mind and the programs located there are massively more powerful than willpower. You never had a shot against these limiting programs and it's time to set yourself free. It's time for my soapbox speech. For starters, you have unlimited potential. You are capable of much more than you think. The programs lock you into a prison cell. Even though there are no walls, no metal bars in your prison, you are still not free. You aren't free to have all the things you want in life. You are limited. It's one of the most frustrating prisons to be in because you get to see other people with all the things you want, but as hard as you try, you still cannot seem to get those things you want for yourself. Let me eliminate that line of thinking. You can and will have all those things because I'm gonna teach you how. It's all in the mind. I want you to have all of that, all the goodies this life has to offer because it's all part of the game. Some of you may listen to this and will never come back and others will resonate with this message and will be hungry for more. If you are staying along for the ride, it's because your consciousness is ready to hear all of this. Others might not be ready for the message. Regardless, we are all here to grow and learn and raise our levels of consciousness. In fact, that's the game. There are levels. The game is timed. You are the main character in your game and the villain is the ego, which is the voice in your head that lies to you. It's also interactive and everyone else is playing their own version of their game. This may not match up with your already created belief systems. And for others, the universe brought me directly to you because you're ready for the message. Does that make sense? It's called an awakening. I was asleep until the age of 28 and I slowly started to awaken from my sleep. There was no way the message I'm sharing today would make any sense to the 28 year old version of me, but there are parts that will strike a chord. And that's why I'm sharing it because I want you to come along for the journey with me. It took a miracle for me to go down this path. I'm talking about a mystical experience, something unexplainable to the physical laws of the universe. Someone was able to tap into my reality, into my thoughts and get information that no one else had access to. Oftentimes, this is what, is, this is what it takes to begin an awakening. That's why when you have family members who are addicted to drugs, there isn't much you can do for them. It takes for them hitting bottom to experience so much suffering that it causes a miracle. Some people call it a come to Jesus moment, but for the most part, it's a come to life moment. It's the moment you step into the depths of hell and the fear of that place becomes so unbearable, you only have two options. One choice is a tragedy and the other choice is a rebirth. I've had that experience many times over and it's part of the human experience. Why is that important? Because regardless of where you are in life, if you are in the depths of hell, or you are floating in the lower levels of consciousness, or if you are simply deeply struggling in one to two areas of life, regardless, there is always hope. There's always a way to grow and learn and to overcome your past. Always, always, always. I want you to know that you are not alone on this journey. I pray into the ether every day for the lost souls, for the souls imprisoned by their own minds. I don't have the key directly, but I can guide you to where the key is located. And guess what? It's always within you. The answers are inside and it just takes a little work to discover it. Never give up. We are all meant to find the way. If not in this lifetime, then the next or the next one after that. You belong here and you're meant for great things, trust me. Love you all, 
and you're always welcome back.